to them not being there at all. Well, we have gotten used to our men being less than and not stepping up to the plate. Mm-hmm. Far too many of our children are growing up fathers. Right. It has become the norm to have the child's last name different from their father. Right. This abnormality has become the norm. Right. When it's expected to visit daddy in prison rather than the office, that's an abnormality and that has become the norm. Uh-huh. Or when grandma has to be grandma, mama, and daddy, yes, and that abnormality has become the norm. All I'm saying is as barriers, the absence of a man is a serious thing. Right. And it should never be belittled to a punchline in a Tyler Perry stage play or believe it can just be prayed away. Action must be taken so we can find the man and restore him to his rightful place in the home and in the world. The absence of the man has gotten so bad that we're as perplexed as God was in Genesis 3 and 9 when he looked out to find Adam, did not see him, and he asked, where are you? We're asking ourselves as very, where is Adam? Looking for him and can't find him where he needs to be. Where is Adam? Well, you gotta understand, Adam, like it or not, God made you the head of household yes, for a reason. He right. didn't create you to run when problems arise. Yes. God didn't craft you to not have a vision for your household. God didn't make you to be absent. God made you to be present. Yes. Uh, I think I think I got it now, Sister Crystal. The reason why so many women are bitter, the reason why so many women are angry, the reason why so many women are frustrated is because too many women are doing what the Bible said was designated for the man to do. I'm just asking where is that? Y'all ain't gonna like me today. If y'all don't believe me, watch the text. When we get to the book of beginnings, Genesis, we are here asking where is Adam? As we unpack the scene, we see Adam and his then unnamed wife is in the Garden of Eden, Genesis chapter 2. Here we quickly find out that bad things happen when Adam is nowhere to be found. Well, Biblical study tells us that Adam was placed in charge of the Garden of Eden. It was his mandate to be a good steward of what God placed on this earth. And that's what he was called to do. But somewhere along the line, Sister Harris, Adam slipped into a field of comfortability so much that he allowed his wife to do what he was called to do. You see, he was placed over the garden, a place that was majestic and beautiful beyond measure. In this garden, there were two trees, a tree of life and there was a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Garden of Eden was so stunning that it had a river flowing from it. The river parted into four river heads, the Pishon, the Gihon, the Hikadel, and the one we all know was Euphrates. This lets you know where Eden was and where it touched. It was Adam's job to take care of God's garden and to make sure nobody ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Are you with me? Yes. But what's going on in the text, between chapter 2 and chapter 3, is the aftermath of God creating man and woman and putting them in the garden together. Watch this. Man fell asleep. And the woman is walking in the garden trying to find some food for the man before the man wakes up. That's not a bad thing. But the bad thing came from it. You see, Adam got used to his wife operating outside of what she was called to do. She was not called to provide totally for the family, for the home. That was Adam's job. She was doing what Adam needed to be doing. She was made to be a compliment. She was made to be a help me. She was made to fill in the gap. But because Adam was asleep, what she was not created yes. to do. Well, that's a problem. Yeah. Adam had been sleeping for far too long. 
about it. So long that the woman has become the man and the woman. She left the home to provide for the family. She was no longer the complement, but now she had to be the primary provider. You got to understand, women don't mind filling in the gap for a season, for a short time. But in the back of their mind, they may not say nothing, but I'm telling you, they're thinking, this is not what I was created to do. Yeah. 
Adam, you gotta make your sure your building is covered. If you wanna make your sure your house is whole, your purpose is fulfilled, you gotta make sure your house is covered. The woman was not covered. And it says in verse 6, as she looked for food, there was a tree, watch this, that looked desirable in her eyes. Mm -hmm. This shows us when you're not focused on what God needs you to focus on, during this season of your life, you will get distracted by what you think you want. All right, man. The text said the fruit was desirable. Yeah. All right. Don't get mad at the fruit no more. Well, the fruit was doing its job. Yeah. 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 It wasn't poisonous. Yeah. And it was not safe. Right, right. But you gotta understand that very the enemy will never tempt you with anything that's, that's right. out of season. That's right. That's right. But he'll tempt you with something that's out of your reach. Yeah. For the thing God told you not to do in the first place, that habit you've been trying to kick, the dark places of your life you're trying to get away from. You know it's out of reach, but the enemy is trying to put it in your hand. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. She was hungry. Uh-huh. And the enemy wanted to give her some fruit. Yeah. <laughs> she wanted, all she wanted to do was provide for her family. Right. The problem came as she took what was directly in front of her without thinking about the consequences that would come from it. She listened to the serpent and then she began to look at what the serpent told her to focus on. Uh-huh. She lost track of what God told her to see. Right. And paid attention to what the serpent told her right. to see. Yeah. It's bad enough the enemy speaks to you. Yeah. It's worse when he gives you a visual aid. Come on. But you must remember, people of God, it may look good at the moment, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's still not good for you. Yeah. <laughs> When they ate, they suffered the effects of grabbing after the wrong thing in life. Uh-huh. Here's what happens. Adam woke up, but for one of the few movements Adam made in the text, it was not a good one. Wow. He showed up at a crucial time to make an uneducated move that affected the course of humanity. Yes. When the woman gave him the fruit from the forbidden tree, he did not ask questions about it. He just ate it because he trusted the woman to give it to him. This just shows me, always think hard before making a crucial decision. The final result could mean life or death. I'm not preaching to the women. I love y'all. See y'all next week. I'm preaching to the men. It doesn't matter who thinks you're taking too long. It doesn't matter if folks think the decision you're making is not popular. There is more involved than just you. You must think hard before making a crucial decision. Yes. And so, <laughs> with all this going on, Aunt Mary, after they ate the fruit, uh-huh. became ashamed and tried to hide yeah. in the bushes. Well, God asked in verse number nine, Where are you? Like it or not, God never asked for the woman. That's well, right. He did not care about the serpent. God asked. For Adam. That's right. Now, God didn't ask for the woman not because she wasn't worthy of God's attention. Right, right, right. God asked for Adam because God placed Adam in charge. Right. So I don't want nobody else blaming the woman. Right. Adam must take responsibility. Right. And just in case you ain't caught it yet or you don't want to say amen, at the end of the day, we're looking for Adam. That's right. I know what the woman has done over the years, and we thank God for that. Right. But where is Adam? Yeah. Adam, it's time to step yeah, up. Yeah, Adam, yeah. it's time to wake up out of your slumber. We're asking, where are you? Come out of 
fighting yes. become who God has called you to be. The family is waiting yes. on you. The birth of a nation is waiting on you. Where is Adam? When God asked the question, He wanted Adam to own up to the mistake that was done. Yeah. What did it show me? Well, in God's judgment for the actions made, Adam took his punishment. Not because of wrong versus right, but because Adam wanted to get back in right relationship with God. Adam was now called to toil the ground for his food. Right. His wife would have multiplied sorrow and...